Hey guys and welcome to another video and welcome to episode 10 now I think of my F1 2017 career mode and so today we are doing the British Grand Prix so as you guys saw there we changed our helmet a bit I made it you know uh, like my country flag I changed it up a bit just because you know it needed to change um, at least it's going to be like that for a few races um, I'm glad that I can actually do that now because of the new feature in this game Hi, I've got something you'll be interested in those performance upgrades we discussed after the last race they're on the car and the data looks promising take a look at the details so as you can see on your screen guys we have a new um, update, uh, I mean upgrade on the car um, and once again another sponsor bonus which is incredible we're getting a lot of sponsor bonus and we might actually be able to overtake McLaren in the championship um, as you can see right now we're doing another upgrade to the aerodynamics it's one of our poorest um, poor sections of our car um, I changed the um, engine parts and uh, now we're going to go for the practice session of the British Grand Prix. As well. but how do you like Silverstone in its current guys? Well, the old circuit was a lot of fun, of course, but I do like the current layout. The reprofiled Abbey is faster than it used to be, and I always felt it was missing a sort of slow technical section. And now the corners up at Village and the Loop gives us that. So yeah, I'm a fan, and uh, on top of that, I think it's created some more overtaken opportunities. So welcome to practice one. This is the track monetization test. Um, British GP it was a pretty exciting one in real life. Um, let's hope we're going to have a good one um, As you guys know, England um, British GP is a a real high speed um, technical circuit, and we need a lot a lot of downforce for it. I'm not saying you don't need straight up speed, it doesn't really need it in certain parts of the track, but uh, our car is definitely understeering, especially in turn 1 and in the maggots and bickets section of this track. Um, as you can see on the screen now, I'm just. I might not be talking about what is on going on the screen, but you guys should now be you know. You guys should now should know everything that should be going on. Um, in the practice session, so well here we are. Well this is the qualifying session. I only managed to make um, make the green. Um, and for this uh, particular race, decided to change the components fully. So some of the parts were actually on our last um, available engine components before we actually start getting penalties. So. Let's hope we're not gonna session, okay, get that. So far, um, well, we're focused. probably going to get a penalty still because of uh, we're still in the tenth race of You're the season. The this is the strategy test. Just do Hamilton behind us. We're blocking him a bit there. <coughs> was probably not so happy with us, and that was practice line, two. Um, oh, now we're going to go Rikkonen. on. All fine, so that we'll see, we'll see you again how good we can do, and maybe even getting the Q2 like we did in some other sessions. Um, and yeah, this is practice three. I just simmed through it. I didn't even do any um uh, Hi, any practice. I actually mistakenly I went to that better. session. So this is our qualifying goals, P18 and beating Fernando Alonso. Um, so yeah, let's go to the first qualifying session. It's a Saturday afternoon here at Silverstone and that means it's time for today's qualifying. Enjoy the action. Looking at this field today, Ants, do you think we're gonna see anyone take a chance? Maybe run the harder of the available compounds and save some of the grippy tires for the race tomorrow. 
Well, I'd be surprised in all honesty. It's only the front runners that really have the pace to get away with that. And even then, at the end of the day, it's a big risk. Track position is the most important thing, and it's rarely worth sacrificing for a slightly more optimal strategy in the race, so I doubt we're going to see anyone trying it. I have been wrong before, though. We certainly do see some risky decisions every now and then, and it's a gamble that's sometimes worth taking. But if it were me in the car, I would want to be on the fastest tyre for my qualifying lap, without a doubt. So this is our first run in the qualifying session. We were doing a pretty decent lap, I would say, for our banker lap. Um, I actually, this is actually one of the most laps I ever done in the qualifying session. So I did like four four runs. So this are going to be our last run. Okay, I actually made two runs on the same tire. I forgot to change tire. But as we crossed the line, I think we were in P15. Yes. At the moment, I actually did not know. I actually forgot that P15 meant I was going to go through uh, Q1, just about the last position available to to get through, and by a little, of course, we absolutely smashed our teammates um, our teammates' lap more than a second quicker than him. So things looked pretty interesting, even though we actually increased the difficulty. I might increase it just a little more in uh, in the next race in the future. So this is Q2 now. This is our first run. Um, I didn't. I forgot if I did more than one run. I probably did just to be more, you know, what I was doing. Um, I think I actually made a run. You know, I exited the garage manually. Um, and yes, this is our last run now, um, and we are simming through the session. We're last place, and we're probably gonna get worse and worse into the session. Yes, end of the session, we are way, way um, off from P14, Roman Grosjean. Something like six tenths, which is incredible. Um, but still, we managed to get into Q2, beating our teammate, beating Fernando Alonso. Our rival, if you guys forgot, um, more resource points. I'll probably upgrade the chassis. Continuing, um, reputation's looking good as well. Um, as always, our agent is going to talk to us. And uh, she gave us our race goals. So without further ado, let's go to the British GP R Grand Prix. The pain of parting is nothing to the joy of meeting again. And how joyous indeed it is to be back at Silverstone once more for the British Grand Prix. The queues to get in this morning extended miles back down the A43, such as the enthusiasm for Formula One in this country. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position, and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Raikkonen, Max Verstappen, and Ricardo, Massa, Stroll, Sainz, and Esteban Ocon, Hülkenberg, Perez, Daniel Kvyat, and Grosjean, Asalba, Palmer, Kevin Magnussen, and Fernando Alonso. Their line and Stoffel van Dorn completes the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. So here we are in the grid. Um, this is my setup. Uh, no, my strategy. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, I'm really not good with English, you know, when it comes to talking, you probably know by now. Um, but this is just me playing with the setup. It seemed like starting on the softs was the better, the better um, 
strategy for this race. Probably lots of uh, back runners. Um, we're going to do the same as I'm doing. Um, but anyway, here we are on the grid. It's going to be five lights for this Grand Prix. And it's lights on, away we go. Got a pretty decent start, but we back off once um, the pack starts to pack up. Um, try and go around the outside here of a couple of cars. We're up to P12. Incredible start. Down the inside of a couple of cars. Side by side with Stroll there. Um, and now Stroll still finding with us, but as we try and overtake Hulkenberg, it's going to be P9 from the start. Absolutely incredible. Um, but look at that. We have lost the gear from the car. Goodness me. That this is just the start of the race. I have already had problems. We cannot pit now or we'll lose a heap of time. Um, but yeah, look at that. I think we lost sixth gear. Yes, it's sixth gear. And, uh, well, one of the most important gears probably. Next to seven gear. Because lots of high speed sections in this track. And going a bit wider while fighting with Lance Stroll, Hockenberg manages to get us. We're really moving really slowly with just seven years in our car. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try and hold off the other guys. We're definitely one of the slowest because of this um, issue. Uh, but yeah. Uh, skipping that lap to has still have Lance Stroll. As you can see, going a bit wider. Two cars. It can be true now. As there's a bit of M plate from, I think, Kvyat's car there. Uh, he's gonna try and go uh, down the inside of ours and uh, in the Maccas and Beckett section but we managed to hold P11 for now side by side with Okan now trying to get him and we actually do their incredible move even though we only have 7 gears in our car um yeah P10 for now and this British Grand Prix. He's gonna definitely try and get us. We're definitely slower. We're gonna try and go too wide there. He goes a bit away and loses a lot of position. If we manage to keep in our position, we're gonna be side by side now with Kvyat in this Mackets and Pickett section. This reminds me of Dark Crash with his teammate um, in the actual Grand Prix. But as we continue in this lap, we can see Daniel Cliffy is going to try and get us around here, so we're going to try and push him off and hold him up as you miss. And that's, that's actually Palmer who passed um, Kibi just because of us. Um, um, pushed him off, and Palmer, well, easy overdick for him. We cut up at the corner there, you can see we almost used the car single pretty wide. And Kibi gets a better run on us, so it's going to be too wide here in the first turn. And uh, we go a bit wide because of that. And uh, we get an illegal overtake when he absolutely pushes us off the track. We're gonna lose a heap of positions. And it's because of yellow flags, we can't pass Alonso, but now we can, so we actually do. Well, what an incredible action pack the first few laps. Um, it's lap 5 now. We decided to make the undercut on the others. Um, just because we have lost the gear and we have damaged our front wing. Um, we decided to fix our front wing damage as well. As you'll see, um, our pace out is going to be a very long one. We're probably going to lose the position to Fernando Alonso. Um, yeah, it's going to be like a 9 second stop. As they are usually in the Sauber are not the best at changing front wings, I would say. Yeah, um, we're way off um, from Alonso, and uh, yeah, just because of Kvyat, we have lost a big the race chunk of time to the other runners. Um, skipping up to lap 8, we're really pushing the car. As you can see, the gearbox is not so worn out, so we're pretty lucky that we did not lose... Um, uh, any more gears or you know uh, maybe 
maybe even have issues like we had in other races, so it's obviously fixed itself since he okay, well, decreasing the cap two, every lap for number one so until we manage to finally reach him. Um, that's there's someone going slow, and that's Kimi Rakan, and I think he has a puncher. I'm not sure he probably does though. But now look at that. We are very close to Fernando Alonso. We go a bit wide there. But he's going so slow, but he actually decided to dive it down the inside. Very risky move, but he actually did not see it coming. That's one of the. That's one for the overtakes of the year, probably. Because this is your Ricardo in Monza. It was very close to that. Um, but skipping now to the last lap of the race. Sebastian Vettel wins the race. Um, he would be pretty happy about that. But we're gonna cross the line in a very disappointing P18. Not good enough. Not good enough at all. Let's push harder next time, okay? So, another excellent win from Ferrari. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. It's a good result for Sebastian Vettel, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. And now I'd like to ask you, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Well, my driver of the day was Nico Hülkenberg. He did a cracking job moving through the field and just highlighting why he's so highly rated in the paddock. On to the constructors then. It was a tough race for our championship leaders who lose ground at the top of the table. Meanwhile, Toro Rosso's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us and goodbye until the next race. So yeah, that was the race. Um, Sebastian Vettel wins the race. Mercedes are still in first place. The driver standing Sebastian Vettel now leads the championship. Lewis Hamilton um, overtakes Bottas in the championship. But for us, it was another disappointing race. Um, the team definitely did not seem happy about it. Probably gonna lose some reputation because of that. And uh, lose a bit of, um, of points probably because of that. Well, it probably wasn't our fault just because Kifia hit us off and we lost like five positions. So yeah, we're gonna probably lose not a rivalry because we actually um, beat Fernando Alonso, lose a bit of reputation from McLaren there, a big red bar near it, and as you can see, we have a new um, classic car challenge, but we're gonna leave it for the next race, guys, as we always do, but anyway, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.